Instagram has been a channel where we are able to get access to personal shoppers, resellers and check the latest photos of the items especially if the page has a lots of followers automatically we assume this account is trustworthy and we tend to give it our money so in this video i wanted to share some tips to help you to avoid mistakes and i hope that you will like them and if you have any additional tips to share please leave them in the comment section down below please give this video a thumbs up i would really appreciate it subscribe to my channel and follow me on my instagram account which is the same as my youtube account black and gold style please also consider checking out my other playlist i posted quite a few videos about cartier van cleef and arpels bulgari rolex luxury tips and mistakes dior jewelry weekly vlogs style and fashion, Chanel bags, luxury shopping vlogs, beauty products and travel videos. Many people oftentimes just go and check followers of this particular group or reseller or personal shopper and if they see some big accounts they automatically assume it's safe to purchase from this person. Oftentimes people subscribe to these accounts just to get the latest updates. These accounts usually share the latest pictures of the items and sometimes we don't have to go to the store, we can just check whatever is coming and the stock that is coming to certain countries. However, it doesn't mean that these people actually purchased from this account. The reason why they subscribed to that channel is probably because they want to get the latest updates on the items, they just want to see what's new, and oftentimes these accounts are sharing items that are not available to public, so it's quite useful. And the first thing that I would do, I would actually go and ask for references from Instagram if any other users from Instagram purchased from them and I would actually go and contact them and ask for their experience. I know many people might not find it comfortable but I feel like we don't have the choice in this economy. We need to do that to protect ourselves. Another tip that I have is to go and ask for their location. It's important to know this because if there is no store, how are they going to get it for me? And also, if they have to source it from another city, how can they ensure the quality? And also, how long will it take me to receive my item in total? And another thing that I would do, I would just go on Google and put the name of that personal shopper or the group that you're following and would try to find information about them online. You would be surprised what might come up. There are lots of groups and communities on Instagram and Facebook that might be discussing. Unfortunately, nowadays there are so many super fakes on the market and it's quite hard to spot the difference. So what I would ask for is to send me close up pictures and videos of specific parts so for example if there is authenticity number the receipt the logo i would ask to check all of that and there are many websites out there that are actually providing the authenticity services you don't even have to pay much to them it can be 50 to 100 dollars but it's definitely worth it they can help you to check if these items are legitimate scammers can come up with all sorts of excuses it doesn't take a long time to take a photo and a video if you are trying to sell an item even if you want to just list it on other websites you still have to take photos and videos so it makes no sense why this person refuses to take pictures and videos after all they would like to have a happy customer that would want to come back to them and purchase more from them so I would find it quite sketchy and take it as a red flag and stay away. 
of course a lot depends on the situation and how the conversation goes because i presume there are a lot of prospects that come in ask for all sorts of pictures and videos and waste resellers time of course i would not want to do that i would only ask for information when i'm absolutely ready to purchase the item by the way guys there are so many apps out there that can help to retrieve information about the photo the camera the date the time and the location as well which is essential because that's how you can catch them on a lie of course scammer can always change this information but not everyone knows how to do that Many resellers offer a bank transfer and while it has lots of benefits such as there is no extra fees, at the end of the day, if you transfer the money to this person, you can't get it back. There is no buyer protection, you are literally leaving yourself exposed and that's not something that I would recommend. I would rather go and pay additional money just to make sure that I'm protected and if anything goes sideways, I can get my money back. Sometimes it's definitely better to pay more, especially if you're dealing with the person for the first time. I typically use PayPal, I'm quite happy with their services and their customer protection. A lot of people are switching to WISE and by the way, this video is not sponsored. I'm just sharing my experience and apparently they charge less and on their website they say that they have a dedicated fraud team that can help to provide support. However, it's very important to read terms and conditions and to know for how long this protection is valid because usually that time is not extendable. There was one interesting case. A person wanted to purchase a Chanel sweater. She paid for it through WISE and the seller was very responsive and very helpful at the beginning. Just look at these messages. This camera is very supportive, responds very fast and tries to convince the victim that the item will be dispatched within 24 or 48 hours. By the way, from this screenshot, I had to hide the first digit, which is a country code, and the last two digits of the number. Just look at this. He even suggested to her to use TransferWise. He knows this platform so well. So what the scammer did, he initially just dragged the time to make sure that WISE will not demand for a refund. He told her that unfortunately the sweater has a hole, he cannot send it to her and he will request for another new piece from another store. He kept coming up with all sorts of excuses and dragging time. And in the end, after the time passed by and he knew that the victim is no longer under protection of TransferWise, he just started deleting and unsending messages and blocking her. While things happen and situations like that do occur with legitimate sellers, the transfer will take a few days and you also have to factor in the delivery time. And you have to make sure it's going to be before 14 days passes. Otherwise, you will not be under protection anymore and will not be able to recover your funds. Also, what I would do, I would screenshot the whole conversation with this seller. I would make sure I have everything documented because if in the event something goes wrong, you would have to provide the proof of this. So you would need this information. Many of the scammers can block you. They can unsend the messages. It's going to be quite hard for you to prove. This is not what I would do in the past, but here in this kind of cases, I feel like that's the only way for us. Unfortunately, we have to become stricter, especially while these services such as WISE or PayPal are still able to protect us. Also, legitimate business should be able to ship the item to you right away. And let's say if they're sending it with DHL, it should not take more than five days 
days to deliver it to you. So it sounds very sketchy if the item cannot be delivered to you within five business days, maximum seven. So it's a red flag to me. After the seller gets your item, they should be able to ship it within the next two to three days and they should provide you with the tracking code right away. Let's say if you send a package with DHL, after the package gets picked up from the sender, the receiver will automatically get the tracking code sent via SMS. So if you don't get the tracking code right away, I would take it as a red flag as well. After you receive the items, I would inspect it, make sure it looks legitimate, compare the pictures that they sent to you. And I would also try to check if there is a strange smell, let's say from a sweater that you purchased or from a bag. A legitimate branded item should not have any odor. So I would pay attention on things like that. I would look at small details if the buttons look the same as it is displayed on a website. I would inspect everything if it looks legitimate. And of course, if you have other items from this brand in your collection, you can always compare the font on the logo, the tags, and just to see if it looks legitimate. If you discovered that you were sent a fake, I would go right away and create a report and try to get your money back. They can tell you, oh, this product was modified. For example, there was a case when one person was told that the strap of Chanel small classic flap bag was actually made longer. And this is not true because Chanel has never changed their strap. The bags still look the same as from five or seven years ago. So what I would do, I would go and search for this information online about the product. I would check out some videos and I would go and check the description on the website. They always display measurements. So I would ask for all that. This is it guys. Thanks for watching and I hope that you found this video useful. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Instagram account, which is the same as my YouTube account, black and gold style. Have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.